Okay, good afternoon, Facebook family, friends, anybody that is tuning in for our next edition of the town hall for Milden Hall. And um, I think I wanna do is just to make a couple announcements per se, you know, it's, I think it's been probably a month, month and a half since the last time we have conducted a town hall. And, you know, again, we, we continue to learn a lot about how this is, the COVID has um, affected us as a community. And there's been a series of town halls of late. The DIA had a town hall two days ago. The 48th Fighter Wing conducted a town hall last night. And we're gonna try to attempt to help answer some questions. Um, our focus today is through several lenses. We've got the Med Group available. We've got our MPF and then we've got TMO. So it kind of centers around what we're trying to do and a focus for is um, the PCS time of year and any housing related issues. Uh, and if there's questions of that nature, please send them in. We did receive a few questions already and we'll try to answer those as best as we can. Um, and if it's directly related to DODIA, if we don't have the knowledge of, or the answer to those questions, uh, we'll make sure that those questions are forwarded on to our school liaison officer and the DODIA leadership team to help close the loop and answer those questions as they come in. Um, Anyways, so what we want, what we're going to do right now is have our panel members introduce themselves, and then we'll go to the questions that we've received. Why don't we start off with the uh, MPF? So, Master Sergeant Gardner, would you mind introducing yourself? Hello, all. I'm Master Sergeant Deidre Gardner, Section Chief of Career Development, and I'm here to answer any PCS-related questions. Excellent. And then we're going to. Transition over to Chief Master Sergeant Ritz. Afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm Chief Master Sergeant John Ritz. I'm the transportation officer here at RAF Milton Hall, servicing the tri-base area for all traffic management related issues, uh, household goods and packs. Uh, join with me today, I have Tech Sergeant Haley Smithhelm. who will be helping me answer any questions that uh, you may have. Okay, and then let's let's ask the med group. Looks like a trifecta over there. I, I believe we have Senior Master Sergeant Mullins and Chief Mueller. Um, would you mind introducing yourselves? Hello, sir. I have Senior Master Sergeant Wentworth, Chief Master Sergeant Piper, and then I have Chief Master Sergeant Leon and I and Senior Master Sergeant Mullins. We're happy to be here to ask answer any medical questions you have. Awesome. Well, thank you, team. And while we have kind of said that these are the categories that we want to focus our attention on, if there are other questions that aren't related directly to the panel of experts that we have today, please continue to ask those questions. And again, I'll try to do my best to answer those for you. If I don't have the answer, we will make sure that we give you that answer immediately or as soon as possible. All right, um, let me see if we have any. Okay, the first question, got it. Here we go. All right, first question is, has the TMO office reopened for customers and briefings? I believe that should go to Chief Ritz. So our both offices, both the household goods and PACS office have, have yet to open back up to foot traffic. We're still fielding email and telephone conversations uh, for customers just so we can uh, be per, prevent from, uh, you know, social distancing and, and keeping uh, the office clean as, as much as possible. Okay, thanks chief. Um, and we're gonna go in, continue along the line of questions. And just a reminder for those that are joining us, if you have questions, please drop them in the comments portion of the Facebook side of the house and then we'll start answering those as we receive those. Um, why don't we ask something for the MPF side of the house? Can I take leave in route? Yes, um, leave in route is, au is authorized. Um, you will need losing and gaining commander concurrence. Um, that could be via MFR. It could be via um, email. We need something in our office to make sure that you're good to go. And as well as risk assessment. So obviously if the location you're going to is red, that has another impact. 
Uh, but long story short, yes, Libra Roth is authorized contingent on losing and gaining commander concurrence and risk assessment. Okay, awesome. And for the med group, what kind of appointments, um, what appointments are still not available due to COVID restrictions? I went out there. Hey, sir. Thank you for the question. Chief Piper here. Uh, without getting into the intricacies of every specialty clinic, the majority, the overwhelming majority of our services are available, although most are by appointment only, similar to all the other ins uh, installation, uh, you know, HPCon measures. Trying to limit those walk-in services. Uh, our emergency department, though, does remain unaffected. They are consistently open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and immunizations is a popular one, especially in terms of readiness. It remains by appointment only. Uh, but for HCOS, adult family medicine, pediatrics, um, all those specialties are still open, limited to by appointments. There is, I do want to just clarify, there are three specialties we do not have available currently, but that is not associated with COVID. Uh, we have dermatology, our allergist, and our neurologist. All are currently in the transition of PCSing those specialists in and as they quarantine and in process to the med group. So those three specialties are impacted currently, but that is not COVID related. That is just from a manning availability perspective. Oh. Excellent, Chief. Thank you so much. Um, all right. I think um, the next question, I'll just, we'll just go around the room again and continue this process. Uh, Chief Ritz, um, I have a scheduled household goods unaccompanied baggage pickup for July, August, or September. Are those still a go, or will the TMO office work to reschedule those appointments? So everything that was already pre-scheduled for those months, July, August, and September are still happening uh, as long as the member has orders. All we ask that is if you exchange your, uh, if you're changing your PCS months, um, we don't get any notification from MPF that you've changed your DEROs or you've extended here. So you must reach out to our office to let us know that you're changing. That way we can change your dates. If not, uh, we're still proceeding with uh, the dates that you set up um, originally. Okay, great. Um, let me see here. We're getting some of the questions from the Facebook stream here. And it says, um, I didn't see who it was. Sorry, apologize. But it says, if a dependent travels back to the United States upon return, does the whole family have to quarantine, specifically the mil military member who did not travel? And so, Here's the process that we're working on. Um, basically, by and large, especially if the state that they travel to is maybe considered red, then then yes, that imposes a quarantine. Also, the UK government has directed quarantines for locations that they don't have clear air corridors to. So for the military member, it makes total sense for us to quarantine the entire family because if we can afford it, and there's no mission impact, the chance of if a dependent was in a location and they did happen to contract uh, COVID and they maybe potentially were asymptomatic at first, but then are in the same household cohabitating with that military member, the likelihood is then that they could transfer it to that military member. And then that military member could then spread it to the work center or around the base. So as a precaution, we are definitely leaning towards a more conservative route on imposing self-quarantining for anybody that's within a household if any of the family members traveled to the United States in particular. Uh, unfortunately, as we've seen of late, there has been a trend that members coming from the United States, continental United States, have been testing positive for COVID. And we're trying to minimize and mitigate the risk to our greater force. Um, we went through a long period of time without any positive cases. And we did so by enforcing some measures. Like we see here um, with the med group, they are 
distance appropriately, but they also are using preventative measures. Those measures are extremely effective, and that is why we saw a low rate of incidence for COVID. So yes, as a precaution, we are enforcing those uh, guidelines. If things continue um, like they are, we're going to continue to emphasize that, but we will adjust accordingly. It's an extremely dynamic environment. I know, you, I know most of you know this already. So thank you for that question. Okay, it looks like uh, we're going to go to the next question. It looks like uh, I'm going to ask Chief Ritz. We filed a claim when we PCS'd here in 2019. We contacted TMO again months ago, which TMO sent an email out inquiring info. We didn't ever receive a response for any goods that are broken. Okay. All right, sir. So the claims process for filing for household goods when you arrive is through, filed through DPS and it's directly with the carrier, not the TMO office itself. Um, you have 75 days to file initial claim up to two years beyond that. Now, 75 days is the 100% replacement value and it'll depreciate after 75 days up to those two years. Um, if you don't get a response from the carrier through DPS, uh, there is a, a DSN number that you can contact to uh, um, get more information on your claim. That DSN is 312-986-8044. Thanks, Chief. Okay, uh, this one looks like a question for me. Um, off the Facebook stream, it says, um, is there anything in the works for identifying a liaison to help expedite embassy assistance for members that require proof of residence in the UK in order to travel to green zones with their US passport. Some countries are not, not accepting orders alone. Okay, um, this, is, this is where I would probably offer up two considerations. One, I've seen in the past um, for not pandemic reasons, but for other medical impacting reasons like avian bird flu and other instances where we've had um, requirements and careful consideration for countries allowing individuals to come in. Um, I've seen members carrying utility bills that demonstrated that you were a resident because you had a residence within the UK. So that is an option. Now, um, following up on your specific question, uh, yes, we do have liaisons in the embassy here in the UK. And if you could please identify yourself through your leadership, we can try and see how best to support your uh, requirements and then how best to assist you going forward. So I would encourage you to um, push your concern up through our, uh, up through your leadership, and then we will be able to assist. Um, also, Conversely, the host nation coordination cell, um, which is also assigned here, but falls under the 48th fighter wing, they are also too available and able to assist. So there's, there's certainly definite avenues to assist you with your travel plans. Hopefully that helped answer that question. Okay, let's see. That's the next one is, um, okay. How about for Sergeant Gardner? Um, can I take my deferred COT? Yes, we are doing uh, COT orders. So COT essentially is leave. Uh, the biggest piece is SATO and SATO is booking travel for um, COT, deferred COT. So if you wanna take deferred COT, let us know, we can draft your orders and just make sure it goes with the risk assessment. Same thing, green or red, that's where you're gonna get that additional 14 days potentially. But yes, good to go for COT. And for a cop. Okay, um, this uh, this one looks like it's going to the medical group from our Facebook stream. Um, knowing there is a trend of positive COVID nineteen cases for individuals traveling from the U.S., will the med group consider expanding use of COVID nineteen tests to other than official travel? Hi, Sarah Hi, Sir, CMS or volunteer. As of right now, we are not authorized to test other than for official travel. We do not have the need right now for personal travel to provide testing.
Okay. Um, yeah, this is this is an important thing that I, I would also ask the audience to consider. And I, I, I believe Colonel Camilletti brought this up yesterday, but um, one of the measures that we're trying to implement here, especially for new inbounds, is we've established and set up virtual online um, in processing. And so as much as possible, we are trying to um, put that out there as virtual in processing for those members coming in. Because we know that what we're gonna need every family member that comes in or any member that's joining our team that comes in from the United States is that we're gonna enforce that 14 day quarantine. And within that 14 day quarantine period, um, we are gonna support that airman and their family if they have a family member that's traveling with them or family members. And the units have created plans to make sure that if required, they can deliver food and deliver bare essentials or necessary essentials to those family members um, and new arrivals. So that's a process that we're implementing here at the 100th. I'm pretty sure that all of our partner units within the tri-base area are establishing similar processes, but the 14 day quarantine does several things for us. One, um, as you are able to virtually in process, that allows you to do the things so that at the end of the 14 day period, you are pretty much where you would have been if we did not have to deal with some of the restrictions that we put in place. Additionally, it prevents the spread if for any reason whatsoever that that new arrival did contract the virus and maybe were potentially asymptomatic. So we're preventing the potential risk and we're present, preventing the potential spread, but we're also making sure that we are able to support those new arrivals as they come in. So please, um, uh, I understand that it can be a matter of a potential inconvenience, but for the benefit of the entire community, we find that that's the best practice that we can utilize during this current uh, situation with the pandemic. Um, and so we'll continue to work those issues as, as appropriate, but we have limited capacity in the testing. And so when it comes down to it, um, really we need to preserve that for the mission requirements that we've already established and set up. Um, now, if you do contract the virus um, and we elevate you to isolation with testing, certainly if you're, if you've, you're showing symptoms, they, they, prob they most definitely will test you. But uh, by and large, it's, it's not an um, a, a option that's available to us because we lack the capacity. All right, let me go to the next question. Uh, next question is for TMO, again. Um, is there a way we can get PCS hotel and flight itinerary information more than 10 days from departure? It's very difficult to meet all out processing requirements and coordinate for pet transportation on such a compressed timeline. Good question, sir. So uh, with our SATO staff that was furloughed for the last four months, uh, they've just returned this week. We should be able to meet those timelines within, uh, the, within 10 days. Um, we're trying to get itineraries out 24 to 48 hours after the member submits uh, an email or the phone call traffic. Um, but currently we are prioritizing uh, our request right now. We've got folks that are still leaving as of next week that are, are trying to coordinate travel. Uh, and then we're working through August. Uh, so um, definitely it's achievable. We're working towards it. 24 to 48 hours, we should have turnaround on your itineraries. Okay, um, all right, let's see here. So um, I guess the next question on here is, um, where can we find current HP condition information? It's kind of, I kind of it's probably me, but anybody chime in that probably has uh, experience with this. So it's not necessarily in the MPF lane, um, but we are told that you should, military members will have access through CTI Mira, um, and then we can certainly find that information on our Square D app or on the RAF Millen Hall website. Yeah, but if, we, if it's not readily available, we'll make sure that it gets updated there. How's that? Um, that might be a gap in information that we have not satisfied. So if you're, you're looking for that, we will make sure that we update that appropriately Right now we're in HPCon Bravo. 
All right. Um, let's see. Number going to bear with me, please. Number eight. Um, if an active duty member needs to be quarantined because of family member travel, will they be charged leave? How do flights determine which active duty members need to quarantine and those that do not? Okay. Um, so here, here, going back to that process of trying to make sure that we protect our community. Um, the active duty member will not be charged leave. Um, and the, the reason that we are doing this is we're trying to ask members to telework if possible. And I get it. Some members of our team might not be able to telework. Uh, and we're going to have to make allowances for that. Right now, what we've asked our entire team to do here at Milton Hall is really understand how many dependents are off island right now um, in locations that are considered red or in the continental United States. And is more of an awareness so that when those dependents do return, that we already have planned for and made considerations so that we can allow that active duty member to telework. There are some situations and instances where um, it's gonna have a significant impact or potential impact to the mission. And um, we will adjust accordingly, but, but by and large, what we're trying to do is again, protect the community and protect the other military members that may come in contact with that military member whose dependent was traveling overseas away from the island to a location that um, we don't allow our military members to travel to. Um, so um, we'll, we will work with that, work with your leadership team. They're gonna do everything they can to best support you and, and, um, and what your family might need to do. Okay. Um, all right, Med Group, is, is there any COVID restrictions right now affecting deployments at this time? Hi, sir, Senior Master Mullins again. Right now, um, every deployed location has a different requirement and it's all based upon this country specific. Um, a lot of countries do have that pre-departure uh, quarantine as well as some require pre-departure testing. And it, like I said, again, it is all based upon country and what the country wants for our deploying members. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I think, um, Again, very dynamic and there's different requirements um, across the wide spectrum of potential deployments out there. Um, so uh, appreciate everything that everybody's doing to stay on top of it and also the flexibility that's required um, as sometimes there's pre-quarantining and then there's quarantining when you get there. Um, okay, let's see. The next question is, um, all right, going to the MPF. Will deferred COT be extended for more than 12 months? We got here in February and planned COT for June, but we're not able to use it due to the travel ban. So as far as deferred COT is concerned, again, members are allowed to take COT contingent on if the location they're going to, based on the commander's risk assessment, if they can go or not. Um, concerning COT broadly, when a member defers COT, you can use it throughout the duration of the tour. You have to use it within that tour. So. For example, I deferred my COT from Korea. I didn't, but let's say I did. I could take it from the time I PCS in all the way through before I PCS out, if that makes sense. So if you just got here and you're on a two or three year tour, so long as you take it within that tour, you won't lose your entitlement. If you don't take it within the tour, you will lose your entitlement unless the law changes, which I heard rumors that it is, but you can hear that from me. That's excellent. Um, okay. All right. So um, the next question I think is coming back to me is, is driver testing part of the virtual in-processing? Yes, it is. Uh, we have um, migrated the driver testing portion completely virtually. And so great work by our uh, wing safety team to execute that and make sure that it's feasible. So yes, when you in-process, you should be able to do that virtually. Um, if there's any issues, um, it, it's, I, I don't think there have been, but um, if there are any issues, please contact our Airmen and Family Readiness Center. Um, they're our direct liaison, but 
but I think we've got this process wired right now so that it's working very well. Okay. All right, how about for TMO, Chief Ritz? What is a port call window? So a port call window is, the, is a 10 day window that the member provides that uh, our, our travel office can uh, coordinate for Patriot Express. So if a member is going to PACAF and utilizing the PE that's leaving out of Seattle, they will provide a 10 day window so we can coordinate the travel. They don't fly every single day. So we'll try to, within that 10 day window, get them um, across to their destination. Uh, the PEs are, are definitely a, a benefit to use right now, especially going into PACAF because they're flying directly into the installation versus flying commercially where you may have to romp somewhere in country before getting to your final destination. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so next question on the Facebook stream was, will ordinary leave outside of the UK be allowed in the near future? Okay, so um, this, this applies to the 100th members. I, I believe that it's in close uh, lockstep with our other sister wings. But for us, we've given that authority to the unit commander level. And the unit commanders all have a, a matrix that they utilize to determine whether or not it's um, one, allowed to go on leave to a location, i.e. a green location or a corridor that's been designated by the United Kingdom as a corridor that won't impose a quarantine. Um, and so your unit commanders in working with your supervision will assist you with um, putting in for leave off island. Um, for the most part, we're not allowing for any leave, personal leave for military members to the United States. I know that there are gonna be exceptions out there where it's required for a military member to travel to the United States. And those exceptions are getting worked through your leadership channels. So by and large, if you're trying to take some leisure travel, off island, as long as it's not impacted by a quarantine um, from the UK policy, then you should be allowed to take leave. But again, it's a, we've given that decision over to the unit commanders. So work through your supervision. If you have any issues or concerns, feel free to up channel those and we'll try to address those as we, as we see them. Okay, next question is, uh, again for TMO, uh, I PCS in and my household goods are here. Can they be delivered? So household goods can be delivered as long as you're not in quarantine or in isolation in, in TLF. Once you're out of quarantine or isolation, uh, we can set up delivery. We can set up, most, most folks are getting notified uh, that their stuff is ready and they're getting deliveries the next day. So our folks are standing by ready to, to take care of deliveries and get stuff out of the warehouse so they can free up space for uh, outbound personnel. Okay, awesome. All right, um, the next question we got on the Facebook uh, stream is uh, a tasker for me. So um, we arrived Wednesday and a virtual in-processing checklist would be very helpful. It's been call and check or ask via email. Still lots to figure for those inbound, a condensed list would help. Okay, I've got that for action. Um, we'll get the team working on that. And I appreciate that feedback. Uh, anything that we can do to ease the transition for our arriving members is, is what we're trying to accomplish. So thank you for that comment. We're working on it. Um, all right, how about MPF? What does Milden Hall being green mean for me? How do I know I am good to PCS? Sorry, great question. Um, so actually all people that fall into priority nine um, on the DROS reflow. So basically anybody PCSing overseas can come and go without, without restriction to PCS. So if you're PCSing to an overseas location or from an overseas location, you can PCS. However, um, if you are PCSing to PACAV as of yesterday, 23 July, there's a stop movement in order, um, not PACAF, my apologies, specifically to an installation in Hawaii. 
um, due to the hurricane, uh, they're doing a stop movement. However, outside of Hawaii, if you're coming in and out of an overseas location, no matter what the uh, MAGCOM is, you can PCS freely. So make sure you're doing your out processing. Yeah, this is um, an extremely dynamic time and environment right now. So um, just as long as we're having open dialogue and open communications uh, both ways, I think that'll certainly try to help those that are um, going through this process of transitioning between um, assignments. So just, just continue the communication. Um, if you're out there, uh, continue to ask the questions. We owe you answers and we'll make sure that we give you those answers as, as, as they become available to us. Okay. Um, how about for the med group? Let's see, what is the adult family, family care clinic and how does it differ from my previous PCM team? Hey, Sir Chief Piper here. Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, the adult family care clinic actually does fall under my squadron, and so I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, for any uh, adult age dependent who was previously seen in family medicine, we physically relocated here on uh, RF Lake Neve to the old flight medicine building, what we know as building 926. That is where the adult family medicine clinic is now physically located. And the key ingredient to just understand the difference is my provider teams are now able to uh, strictly focus on medicine. And what I mean by that is previously uh, a family practice provider, family medicine provider, throughout their day of 20 patients, they may go back and forth between an active duty member, an MEB, a profile, a shaving waiver, a dependent, a medication refill. And there was a lot of you know, administrative tasks that would come with that. And it would take the provider out of medicine mode and into notification, uh, PRP mode, if you will, making sure that the administrative tasks were adhered to. Now what my providers are able to do, and all providers, we have three of them, are family medicine board certified providers uh, with a PA, and they are just going to focus on medicine. They're going to be able to deliver that safer and more efficient medicine uh, medical care to our adult age dependents. Um, does that answer the question, sir? Yes, I, th I, I believe so. I, and I know that um, you or the med group in general is going through a, a lot of changes and um, reallocating of resources. And I think more so in an effort to maximize the opportunities for our community um, and really focus in on areas that um, need assistance or um, kind of in an operational lens, helping our airmen be more ready with preventative care and support their efforts so that they can go do the things that we are asking them to do for our mission. So um, the reorg of, of those um, clinics and the squadrons and the med group uh, in general, I believe, um, is trying to do those things that I just stated. Is that right, Chief? I think, I, think you're on, I think you're on mute there for a second, but I didn't. Uh, yes, sir, and, and that is a great point that you've made. Uh, this reform, uh, for anyone who's just wondering, this is not a Lake and Heath ism. This is an Air Force-wide medical reform. Uh, we are proud to say that we are the first overseas installation to undergo this reform. Any of our mission partners are PCSing from the states. They've probably experienced this, this change recently. But for those who have been assigned to Milton Hall and to Lake and Heath, this is a change, but it is a change that they will see uh, at their next duty station, I assure you. Yes, sir. Great. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, okay. There was a, there was a question in here, and, and you guys can... Uh, verify this for me, but it was for med group as well uh, on the Facebook stream. It says, how safe is it when your doctor leaves your appointment to go do COVID testing on another patient? Is PPE gear worn? Um, and, and help me with this. I, I believe the answer is yes. Um, uh, it's a great question. Uh, but then um, the testing is conducted typically in a totally separate building, isolated away from the rest of the medical group clinic. And in all times, in all instances, there is definitely proper PPE utilized. Um, but 
please, please help me with that if I got that wrong. <laughs> yes, sir. See, Master Worth, uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, we do our testing in a completely separate building, and full PPE is worn at all times. Uh, none of that PPE makes itself back into the building. Um, it's all uh, disseminated out there in a separate building, so it's totally a clean process. Um, okay, and then I know that this question came up uh, a little bit earlier today in discussions with some of the other leadership teams. Um, right now, we only have one way to test for COVID. However, um, you know, if you watch the news or if you watch uh, other, um, I guess, information channels per se, there are various methods to test for uh, the COVID-19. Uh, instead of through the nose, there have been, I think, mouth swabs and other ways to test. Do we have the capacity outside of just the, the singular test right now? Sure. Uh, sir, short answer is no. Uh, that's probably the most direct. Uh, we are working through our logistics department. They are aggressively pursuing uh, when we talk about funding and supplying of these types of tests, we have to work through our approved through our, our medical higher headquarters. Uh, we we often, uh, affectionately refer to them as DHA or AFMIRA. We work through them on which vendors we're allowed to purchase through. But our, our logistics office, we are proud to say they worked aggressively directly with a company. We were actually able to get ahead of this uh, and get a lot of our testing. And we, we saw the benefit of that. But we're constantly through our logistics department looking at creative ways, other sources, other vendors, um, to the question of whether it's buccal versus nasal. Um, some of those are limited to what we are allowed to purchase. Um, but once we get those clearances, whatever we can do to get a, a increased testing capabilities, we are pursuing. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, let's see. All right, how about for TMO? Can I, can I fly to a leave location when I PCS? Yes, sir. Uh, so I think we also covered that earlier through MPF. As long as both gaining command or the gaining commander and the losing commander approve it, uh, members are able to fly to the leave location. Awesome, thanks chief. All right, uh, back over to the med group. I guess we're getting, we, we sparked something here. Um, if undergoing a surgical procedure, are we able to have our spouse with us to check in and while waiting for surgery or is only the patient allowed? Uh, yes, sir. Senior Warworth again, Surge Ops Squadron. Currently, we are allowing one um, support personnel in there with the member. They are, of course, screened before they come in um, and uh, they can wait in the waiting room. Um, they're not allowed to cover on the med group, but they can wait in the waiting room uh, until the member is done. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you. And some, sometimes I guess that's beneficial if a member was slightly sedated, you might want somebody to be able to drive them back to their residence. <laughs> um, okay, I'm tracking on that. Uh, let's see here. Our hotels in London, I'm oh, sorry, this is to Chief Ritz. Um, are hotels in London, London accepting bookings? I, I presume this is in process of PCSing out. Yes, sir. So uh, all the hotels around the airport are currently open and taking reservations. We've had numerous uh, folks just recently leave. Uh, you're authorized the night at the port before you fly out. So um, just make sure that you book your reservation in enough time and be flexible. Um, we'll caveat onto that. Um, uh, a lot of our airlines, U.S. flag carriers coming from the States, um, due to the the pandemic being rising in the states, the, the flight numbers or passengers on some of those flights are low. Uh, so there are a lot of US flag carriers canceling. Um, so be flexible. Um, it's probably a good thing to stay the night before because that's when you're probably going to get that notification is while you're at the airport waiting uh, for that flight the next day. All right, maximum flexibility is the, is the key here. <laughs> Okay, so I got another question from the Facebook stream. It just says, uh, just to clarify, a member is returning from a TDY that was in a red zone and is required to quarantine. Family members will quarantine as well. Um, yes, the 
um, the family members will quarantine along with the military member. Um, and that is for a 14 day period. And uh, that is to make sure that we not only um, find out if the military member um, potentially is carrying the virus um, to isolate them from that and to protect our uh, community. It's important that the family members who are cohabitating with that military member also quarantine. Uh, again, working through that leadership team, your leadership team should be doing things to help support you to make sure that you're receiving all of the sustenance needs and things that would be appropriate during that quarantine time period. All right. Um, if you uh, let me let me just point that out too. If you're really experiencing difficulty with um, executing that self quarantining plan, please please um, uh, work it through your leadership. But if that's not up to your satisfaction, um, always I'm always accessible. So please let me know. All right, um, Chief Ritz, does the PAX office book pets travel? I guess it's pet travel. So currently, sir, uh, the SATO office will will do the best that they can. Um, currently, the there's only one carrier um, is British Airways that uh, takes the pets. However, that may not be the U.S. flag carrier that is going to your next uh, duty location. So you may be traveling on a different airline than your pet traveling. Um, we do recommend that if, if the service is not uh, up to your standard through our, our the SATO, the contractor, there are many uh, local uh, businesses that specialize in, in shipping pets. Um, I can't recommend any, but uh, I uh, if you Google them in the local area, they will uh, be able to provide service to you. All right, that's, that's perfect. Yep, I, I know this is really difficult time and uh, you know, our fur furry family members, um, they need to be taken care of. Um, and so, again, um, I know of a few members here that have had to travel in advance of their pets. Um, and then, but through those services that you mentioned there, Chief Ritz, they were able to get their pets secure travel um, and then receive those pets in stateside. Um, okay, uh, let me see. How about to the MPF, Sergeant Gardner? If my household goods shipment cannot be picked up by my DROS, can my DROS be adjusted? Yes, um, it's just a DROS acceleration. It's a memo between the losing and gaining. Um, your CSS can help you with the memo and we'll submit it up through CMS and more than likely it'll get approved. Perfect, perfect. Okay, um, and then back to Chief Ritz. Uh, these are these are some of the questions that came in through the uh, previously that we had received. Um, let's see here. I have orders, but one or both installations are not not marked as green on the DoD installation gating criteria results from my purse. Can I still have my unaccompanied bags, baggage, and household goods shipped? Good question, sir. So yes, we're we are accepting all as long as the member has household goods or uh, PCS orders. We are shipping. Uh, the location may be red on the other end. However, we are shipping it to their final destination. Uh, we're not holding anything up here in the UK. Um, we just don't have the space. So we're pushing shipments through to get them back to uh, their next BCS location. Sorry, sorry, I had, had to take the mute off. Um, for um, this next question is for MPF, I'm sorry, Gardner. When trying to take leave during a PCS, will you need the approval from losing and getting commanders before you book your airline tickets? That might, yeah, you might know that or. So when it comes to leave and route, again, it's um, concurrence to losing and gaining. Uh, as far as like something formal, you don't need formal uh, approval. You can just, it could just be something as simple as an email, but just to be safe, definitely want to make sure you get the okay on both sides before you take leave and route. All right, keep on forgetting about this mute button. All right, looks like 
we've got about approximately 15 more minutes uh, left on this um, planned uh, time frame for the town hall. Um, let's see here. I've got um, I've got uh, for Timo again. Um, if my household goods, unaccompanied baggage, are picked up. Will they actually be transported to the destination or will they be held here in the UK in storage until my losing and gaining installation are both marked green on the DOD installation gating criteria results from my purse? I think you kind of answered that before, but just to clarify. Yes, sir. So uh, everything is proceeding on to your next destination. Uh, due to the, the three carriers that we have in the local area, we don't want to uh, basically take up their storage space. So we're not doing storage in transit at, at origin. Uh, we're pushing it to the destination where they'll store it there until the member arrives. Um, currently members are authorized 90 days of SIT when they arrived at destination, but that can be extended up to 180 days um, by the TO at that location. Uh, perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, I think we actually had an inbound member that was affected by the 90 days um, storage and transit, and we did seek a waiver and that that individual got his waiver. So um, that is a entitlement. Um, it requires just a couple strokes of a pen to really get that authorized. So for those that are affected by it, please don't worry about your um, household goods, I guess, is the, the issue. Don't let that drive your decisions is, is another point. Okay. Um, I think this will be for MPF. Can my dependents travel without a no fee passport? Short answer is no. Uh, according to the foreign clearance guide, a no fee passport is required for dependents to travel to this location. Um, no. <laughs> okay. I, I, it, this is, this is, um, this is the foreign clearance guide answer. Uh, however, I believe that if they're command sponsored um, and on your orders, I, I believe what we've worked and established through our host nation coordination cell in conjunction with the UK is as long as they have a passport, so which means tourist passport, that um, they could travel here. Um, I think that's just a current arrangement that we have because they realize that right now the State Department is extremely backlogged on delivering passports. Now we are working through the process where individual family members don't have any passport whatsoever. And in those instances, the um, DOD in conjunction with the State Department are expediting no fee passport issuance. And um, those are going on a case-by-case -case basis and they are prioritized. But to give you a, a kind of a rough order of magnitude of how much of a backlog the State Department has right now, I believe that they are short about, um, last I saw in the range of 600,000 passports backlog deficit. So, um, when there are instances where a military member and their dependents are unable to travel, we are working really hard uh, with the leadership teams um, on both the State Department side and on our DOD side to clear up that issue and get that passport, the NOFI passport issued. I know that it potentially could cause some delays, uh, but uh, the number one thing is, is that entry into this country does require a passport. Okay, great question. Okay, continuing with the dependence piece, and this is MPF. All right, can I fly my dependents to the UK if they are not command sponsored? So when um, dependents aren't command sponsored, uh, in accordance with the assignments AFI, they're considered individually sponsored, uh, which means that as a service member, you're taking responsibility for them. So as far as travel, won't get funded for that. 
as far as medical, it's on a, and medical, you guys can speak to this, it's on a space available basis. Um, and then there's several other additional things that dependents are, command sponsored dependents are entitled to that non command sponsored dependents are not entitled to. So I definitely encourage members, if you have dependents, please command sponsor them, or you might want to consider not PCSing with them because it's a, there's a lot of ramifications um, to not command sponsoring your dependents. Yeah, I guess I guess um, since we have the med group here, can you kind of further clarify what it means when we have a dependent here on in the country that is not command sponsored? How does that work? Hey, sir. Uh, thank you for the question, and the MPF can also kind of validate our answer on this for us and our ability to provide medical care, we have to validate that that member is eligible through DEERS. And if the member is not in DEERS, it kind of limits our avail availability to provide care. With that said, we do have space available care that we do provide to retirees, to DODEA teachers. Um, and that's where the non-command sponsor dependents would most likely fall under uh, absent information in DEERS to be able to validate that they are in fact authorized to receive care in our facility. Um, I would turn it over to the MPF to validate that statement, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, yes, that is true. If um, dependents are updated in DEERS, which make sure your dependents are updated in DEERS with the proper address uh, as well. But yes, if your dependents are updated in DEERS, same thing in accordance with the assignments AFI, they are entitled to medical care. However, like medical said, it's on a space available basis. So. Since I have you on the line there, Sergeant Gardner, um, are you guys processing tourist passports at this time? Not at this time. The priority is officials, um, just because of the, the major backlog. And right now with um, Department, of St Department of State being so backlog, we wanna make sure we focus on the mission. Um, so no tourist passports at the moment. We will be gearing up soon. We, we are right in step with the embassy. So as the embassy opens up and they're accepting things, we'll be in step with them and we'll start accepting things. But at the moment, no tourist passports, um, only official passports. Okay, great. And then a follow-up question on the no-fee passport. Um, are GS employees included and eligible to apply for no-fee passports at this time? So I don't want to speak out of term just because I'm, I'm not a civilian personnel expert. Um, so I would have to get back with you. So whoever you are, I hope you left your comment in the okay. chat. <laughs> yep, they did. And um, appreciate that. And then we'll, we'll make sure that's a good reminder that any questions that were left unanswered in this forum, uh, we will definitely follow back up in the comment section. And or if you shoot us a direct message, we'll make sure that we uh, offer up um, that opportunity to answer those kind of questions and make sure that we give you the answer that you deserve. Um, and so let me see here. Ah, okay, this one's for me. You mentioned that if a military member returns from a red zone, the entire family, family has to quarantine. If the member's spouse is a GS employee, are those GS employees expected to use personal leave for this quarantine or is it administrative leave still being authorized? Okay. Um, I will follow up with civilian personnel. Um, they will correct me to 100%, but um, because under the guidance of, that we're trying to adhere to uh, and what I'm trying to do to make sure that we protect our community, um, I believe it should fall under administrative leave. But again, we'll follow up in the comments section just to make sure that I'm 100% correct on that because there are some different rules that govern civilian personnel. So we'll follow up with you and give you that answer um, as soon as we get the, that detail. Okay, great question though. All right, um, this one's going to the MPF. Can military independent members travel to other European countries on our government passports since we cannot get tourist passports from the State Department? Uh, I hate to say this, but the answer to that is no. Uh, no fee passports are government passports. Um, so it's a it's an incorrect travel document. So when you present a no fee passport, you're saying 
I'm going here for official reasons, not for leisure. So you always want to enter and exit the country on proper documentation. Great answer, Sergeant Gardner. <laughs> Keep, you're keeping me out of jail, I think. <laughs> Anyways, um, we we are we've got about five more minutes left, and what I'd like to offer up is to go around the room real quickly and see if there are any comments that you'd like to make to our Facebook audience, um, and that'll give time for any of our participants to ask any last minute questions. Uh, and then I'll probably have like a closing statement at the end of this. So, um, Sergeant Gardner, would you offer up any closing statements at this time? So um, I do want to bring up Cribus. Uh, starting uh, 15 July, the MPF is doing Cribus. So it's the counselor uh, birth abroad. So basically, the certificate that American babies get because when a baby is born here, they get the long form British birth certificate to prove that they're an American citizen, they do need the actual uh, CRIBA. So if you do have any, um, if anyone had a baby and they need that proper documentation, please reach out to our passport office. Um, it's 238-2975, uh, Master Sergeant Ferguson Cox and Staff Sergeant uh, Jay Sean Shirell. Uh, or you can set up an appointment, give us a call. <laughs> um, as well as, just when it comes to our processing, please make sure, I, I know things are greatly impacted due to COVID, but please make sure you guys are um, letting your folks know to complete everything at the final or before the final out appointment, uh, because we hate being the bearers of bad news, but if something isn't completed, myself and my team, we will not process you. Um, so if you need more time, get with Sato, rebook your travel, Definitely, we're flexible. If you need a D-Rolls extension, let us know in advance. But um, just make sure you're getting things done because uh, we, we hate being the bad guys. We want to help you guys out. So that's my two cents. Oh, you guys are never the bad guys. Don't start there. Um, and just another uh, piece of information is that if you're applying for a no-fee passport, our public affairs team does take, for official reasons, passport photos. Uh, they're not for tourist passports, but for no fee passports, our public affairs office does take um, those passport photos for you. Okay, so you don't have to pay for those. All right, Chief Ritz, you got the mic. Hey, sir. So uh, just wanted to let everyone know there, the, there's a TMO buzzword this summer. It's called blackout dates. Uh, this, they're not, not anything new. These happen every year. Uh, they're not COVID related. We're in peak season. Uh, if you run into a blackout date where we cannot uh, get the dates that you're requesting for household goods, and if it happens to be at the end of the month where you must PCS because of your DROS, please work with your MPF and uh, do the DROS acceleration. I will tell you that the uh, first week of August is, is almost blacked out, but the rest of August is looking great. If you can move your dates to August, uh, we'll be able to help you out. Uh, and lastly, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, with my staff, if you uh, reach out to me, I'm on the global john.ritz at us.af.mil. I'll be able to help you out. Perfect, Chief. Thank you. And how about the med group? Uh, yes, sir. But first and foremost, thank you for allowing us to be a, a take part in this panel. Uh, we truly do appreciate the questions, and we're always here to answer any uh, that may come forward after this. Uh, Closing, just want to offer to the question earlier about our availability and what appointments. Obviously, HPCon, can, you know, it's fluid. It can shift left. It can shift right. Uh, what we're doing, uh, providing the director of staff for Colonel Pananon, we are providing the director of staff a stoplight chart is essentially what we call it, so that you can kind of see an ongoing fluid, what is available, what is not available, which specialties are impacted. And then we also utilize the Air Force Connect app to advertise uh, our availability. Um, and then for Sergeant Mullins. So we just want to remind everyone that officially today, the UK has made it a law that you have to wear a face mask when you're downtown. If you do not, it is a hundred dollar or a hundred pound fine. And also to remind everyone that even though we start to slowly open up, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. So please ensure you are socially distancing and wearing your mask and washing your hands every time you can 
to help prevent the spread of COVID so we can continue to open up. Thank you. Now, great, great inputs from uh, the med group team there. Uh, do appreciate your support. And really, when we look back at this, you know, we've been at this in this fight for roughly uh, four months. And when we look at the overall status of our community, it, it is uh, incredible to know how well um, we've done during this global pandemic. Um, yes, we've had cases, but because we've been compliant with the recommendations from the Med Group and from your leadership team, we really have had a very somewhat, statistically speaking, safe journey through this pandemic. And the only way we can continue, can continue to do that is continuing to follow the guidance and process and procedures that have been recommended all along. And so I really want to foot stomp that, that yes, it's law in the UK. And yes, we've been complying with that on the installations. Just take that process and take it with you when you go off installation and then you're going to be very successful. You won't have to drop 100 pounds. Um, although I dropped 20 pounds during COVID. So that's a good thing. Um, physical weight. So anyways, um, thank you for joining us today. We will continue to offer these types of settings when appropriate. Uh, if we get any updates, we will definitely push that information. Um, we certainly use Facebook effectively. So hopefully um, if you're tuning in here, we will push information via our Facebook streams. I don't know that it was mentioned in particular, but the 48th Med Group, when we don't have information directly related to the Med Group, they do also have a page that they put information on that is updated weekly. So pay attention to their um, Facebook site. I think that is a fantastic resource to have. Um, again, thanks again. We will answer any unanswered questions on the comments page. We look forward to seeing you around the installation. We hope that you have a wonderful weekend and be safe. Thank you.